This is Sounds Profitable for Tuesday, March 28th, 2023. I'm Tom Webster, and this is the audio customer journey. Don't stop believing. From an undisclosed location in Prague, Tom Webster reflects on highlights from recent Sounds Profitable research and why it means radio should embrace podcasting. But first, this week on The Deep Dive, Libsyn President and CPO John Gibbons shares Libsyn's vision for the next generation of podcasters. With tools like Libsyn Studio and Connect, Libsyn aims to simplify the production process so podcasters can focus on what matters, the podcast. Tune in now by clicking the link in the description or by going to soundsprofitable.com. So I'm talking to you today from Prague in the Czech Republic. I'm here at uh, Radio Days Europe, so I'm not surrounded by my usual studio in the sky. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the customer journey. Let's say you're a brand new uh, product on the market. And let's say you have an upcoming line of, I don't know, wines and, and cheap perfumes. Your target, small town girls and the city boys who love them. Well, what's the optimal way to build awareness for your brand and to potentially even drive sales? Well, have I got a customer journey for you? Last week, Sounds Profitable debuted our latest research study, The Medium Moves the Message. There were some jaw-dropping highlights to this study. I'm not sure I've ever written a better headline for a slide than podcasting's heavy users are a generation younger than heavy users of radio and TV. It is true that the audiences for commercial AM, FM radio and linear TV are getting older, while podcasting continues to surge 18 to 34 and, let's be frank, underperform 55 plus. But there is another way to look at this data that truly highlights the strength of audio, period. I'm currently in Prague at one of my favorite conferences, Radio Days Europe. I've attended and spoken at Radio Days for many years. It's always a fantastic event, especially for someone who just loves audio in all its forms, as I do. Radio in Europe is not without its challenges. I mean, we all have our challenges. But it's also successful, forward-looking, and vibrant. Podcasting has increased in prominence here year after year at Radio Days, and it now occupies its own summit on the first day, and, and also numerous sessions scattered throughout the event. Still, many European broadcasters have been a bit slow to embrace podcasting. And in fairness, I can understand why. Radio's doing pretty well here. The markets aren't over-radioed like their American counterparts. There's continual investment in technology and content. And European stations haven't ruined radio with too many ads. Podcasting is just a tiny fraction of that market. So a disparity in the investment of time and treasure makes some sense here. But here's why podcasting, especially here in Europe, but to no less a degree in the U.S., should be getting a stronger push from radio broadcasters. In our brand research for The Medium Moves the Message, we looked at the top five advertisers by share of voice in broadcast radio, linear TV, and podcasting, and asked a series of basic brand health questions about all of them to a sample of over 2,000 Americans ages 18 and up. By looking at such a broad sample, we were able to isolate segments of persons who were weekly consumers of each medium and those who were not, and record the differential in response to key brand measures between each medium's best customers, listeners, viewers, and those who don't regularly listen or watch these channels. For example, in TV, we looked at the five leading advertisers by share of voice, Domino's, Progressive, Geico, Subway, and Liberty Mutual, and compared how heavy users of TV felt about these brands with the feelings of people who don't regularly watch TV, and the results were completely fascinating. For each brand, we measured four key brand health indicators, awareness, favorability, consideration, how likely you are to consider researching or learning more or actually buying the brand. And of course, taking action. Did you buy or take some meaningful action step towards purchase? For the five TV brands, we saw very similar results. And I'll just point out one here from Progressive. For Progressive, we saw definitely a difference in awareness, 86% for non-regular viewers, uh, of television compared to 93% of heavy television viewers. And that's a fairly typical pattern here for the large insurance companies here in the U.S. who are heavy advertisers across multiple platforms. There's a clear difference in awareness between heavy users of TV and non-regular viewers. There's a definite increase there. But as you go through the rest of the funnel, the rest of the customer journey, 
favorability, consideration, and taking action, you actually see a bit of a backlash. You see things like taking action decline from the general population to heavy users of TV. And that's a fairly common pattern that I've seen with the most frequent advertisers that really carpet bomb broadcast media in this country. If you watch more than 20 hours of TV each week, which is the definition of heavy user, you get to see a lot of flow, the gecko, and the emu. Still, the increases in awareness are not insignificant, especially when you consider both the numerator, that increase in awareness, and the denominator, which is the size of TV's weekly reach, which continues to be large and roughly double the weekly reach of podcasting. The five radio brands showed similar results when we compared heavy listeners to radio with persons who listen weekly or less or never. There are definite increases in awareness, but as you go deeper into the funnel, the picture gets a bit muddier. Some brands win, some will lose. Some are born to sing the blues. And this, my friends, is where podcasting shines. Certainly, you would expect to see all of these measures increase when you look at the report card for a brand that's been heavily invested in podcasting like BetterHelp. And in fact, we have a, a, a few slides about BetterHelp in this report. And you see that not only is awareness higher, but consideration and action are significantly higher with heavy users of podcasting than with non-listeners to podcasts. But the most fascinating data in this report were the various measures of brand health for those omni-channel saturators in the insurance industry like Progressive and Geico. Now, certainly, when you look at both the percentages for awareness and the larger reach of radio, radio performs very well for awareness. But podcasting's audience is actually much more positive for the lower funnel measures, even with these ubiquitous brands, and even with the fact that these brands often reuse the same audio creative between radio and podcasting. For example, if you look at uh, consideration, how likely are you to consider a purchase of this product? We looked at this for uh, the large insurance companies like Progressive and Geico that advertise across multiple channels. If you look at the exclusive weekly audience for TV, for radio, and for podcasting, the percentage who say that they are uh, very likely or somewhat likely to consider purchasing this product for Progressive or Geico goes from uh, 23 and 19% for Progressive and Geico on television, all the way up to 36 and 31% for the podcast exclusive audience. So even with these ubiquitous carpet bombing brands, uh, the audience for podcasting is much more receptive to considering uh, using one of these insurance brands. So even those brands that saturate every single channel, podcasting is higher in consideration, favorability, and taking action. And in fact, if you look at a summary of the averages for the top five brands in each channel, you can see that radio performs very well for awareness. The average awareness increase across the five radio brands between non-listeners and listeners to radio is seven percentage points. That's pretty good. But when you look at podcasting for the lower funnel measures for favorability, for consideration, and taking action, podcasting just kills it. In fact, when you look at taking action, the differential for TV is one percentage point. For radio, it's six percentage points. And for podcasting, it's 16 percentage points. And here we come to the whole point, why radio broadcasters should embrace podcasting. If you're in podcasting, this data definitely supports a view that advertisers should be buying podcasts to obtain measurable lift in lower funnel measures. But if you are also in radio, then you can have your cake and eat it too. You can present a combined sell to advertisers that isn't just a podcasting value add thrown into a radio buy, but a sequenced part of a total audio solution that starts with building reach on radio and then moves a listener meaningfully along a customer journey towards a deeper relationship with a brand through podcast advertising. It's a true total funnel solution and not one that cannibalizes existing broadcast properties. If you can talk intelligently about the differential impact of radio and podcasting at different parts of the funnel and tell the story of how audio can accompany the listener at every stage, from awareness to consideration to signing on the line that is dotted, who can beat that? Not display, not YouTube's five second and skip ads, and not streaming TV. They're just strangers. Paying anything to roll the dice just one more time. 
Podcasting may seem to be competing for resources with radio, but they're actually incredibly complementary. And the data from The Medium Moves the Message is one of the first credible studies that clearly spells this out. I hope you download and use this study. Sounds Profitable is very grateful to Signal Hill, our research partners in this effort, and to our fine sponsors for helping us bring this project to the entire industry. Wondery, Audiohook, Soundrise, BetterHelp, SXM, Barometer, ESPN Podcasts, NPR, and Mopod. This has been the audio customer journey. Don't stop believing for Sounds Profitable the week of March 28th, 2023. This episode was built using Spooler and hosted on Art19. I'm Tom Webster. Thanks for listening.